Paul Zuharski. I'm the senior director in charge of um, software at HGS Veard and HGST. Um, I'm on the product management side and I'm going to spend a few minutes uh, talking about our Flash Max Connect suite and, and why it's unique and, and why it's necessary for us to, to really uh, put together our, our Flash platform using the software solution. So I'm trying to, here we go. Technology is difficult. Maybe I'm not pointing it quite the right way. Um, so there's a couple things uh, that I was thinking of a little bit earlier. And, and one of the questions that uh, I was asking myself was why is a new software solution necessary for storage? Um, and that's a, and there's a couple things that lead, that lead us to really need Flash Max Connect to, to show how, how the Flash platform is going to change. The first is that Flash devices are fundamentally different than any storage device we've seen in a long time. First being, by the nature of using Flash and having the storage or the, the location of storage on Flash uh, be independent from the actual data or the sizing or the volume you're delivering, you're, you in effect have a, a thinly provisioned volume built in to the device itself. There's no relationship between location and, and the data that you're storing. It's all virtual, it's all, it's all built by the controller because the controller determines where the data is located, not the application, not the operating system, not anything else. If you remember back 20 years ago where we had picked sectors and, and, and everything else just to get performance and we, ne we needed to know where data was on a device. Yeah, now that's completely gone. And particularly in the case of Flash, it's based on where, where it's best located for resiliency, not based on any need for performance because it all performs the same. And the second is, is that flash devices are, are, they change the paradigm of how storage gets put together. So it used to be that you need to aggregate a bunch of disks to saturate a network, which would then feed a CPU or an application. Now, you know, a device, particularly in a server, is as fast as any CPU you can throw at it. So there's no technology you need to build around aggregating storage performance to run as fast as the CPUs and the applications can, can access it. So, and that changes the paradigm and a lot of the technology that existed around aggregating storage performance to, to, to fill an application need. And Howard got his Christmas present early, so that's, <laughs> so that's good. So Now you're just making everybody else jealous. <laughs> So, and the reason why Flash Max Connect works particularly well with Veridant devices is because the APIs that are built in the, to the devices kind of have a built-in journal, built-in, all the APIs are there for us to, to do that, to, for our application to be able to leverage it without having to build that layer ourselves. So a lot of storage applications build journals, they build you know, resiliency and everything else, in our case, we have that built into the device and we just get to access it through APIs. So I'll talk a little bit, I'll talk about the products that we have. Um, and, I've, and I've mentioned this a little bit in the sense of when we talk to our customers, they say, all that sounds great. You know, store, storage next to our, our CPU and our application sounds great, but I'm not trusting my data there unless you have the same feature set that that I trust in my fabric. So the resiliency and redundancy all have to be there for me to be willing to replace my network storage with a flash, a flash storage. So, you know, Flash Max Connect is our solution that, that uh, helps customers bridge that gap between the operational model that they have on the, uh, that they enjoy with the SAN to, you know, where they're gonna go with an all flash solution, all flash server side solution. Um, we talked about this, you know, I'll, I'll talk about each of these in, in a little more detail, but, you know, HA provides a resiliency, uh, storage management provides the ability to share uh, one Flash Max card to a bunch of servers in a very high performance way, and then um, cache allows most applications to, to accelerate their performance. So first, I'm going to talk about VHA. 
And what VHA does is provide uh, synchronous mirroring from host A, from one host to another host. If host A fails, it's leveraged with the, with the application failover by CoreSync or, or whatever to allow the application to fail over seamlessly. The cards themselves are connected um, through InfiniBand HBAs to the, to the other servers, so very low latency transfer at about 10 or 11 microseconds to each write. Reads come, reads come locally. Is it um, IB only or do you support to, today, Rocky and... Today it's, well? today it's IB lo only. Um, mm -hmm. We're working on Ethernet for Q1. Uh, the interesting thing about Ethernet and Rocky in particular is that the same, the only switches that we can find that support Rocky are also InfiniBand switches. So... So it's uh, Mellanox or Mellanox? It's Mellanox or Mellanox at, the, at this point in time. But uh, that low latency, that, that low latency transfer is very important for VHA. Um, the, the thing I'll mention about all our solutions is that we have a concept called the vSpace on, on each of the, on each card and we have a, a bunch of vSpaces on each card. And we can do failover <coughs> on any, any of our flash maximic features on the vSpace basis. And so we can do failover in the case of VHA, we can have two vSpaces on one server and have the failover for one vSpace go to one server and the vSpace or the other vSpace can fail over to a third server. So we are not, there's no physical relationship between our failover. It's all about the, the logical construct of the vSpace that exists. So next, I'm gonna talk about vShare, which is a request from a lot of customers. Um, our cards themselves are, are, are really high in capacity. Uh, we have customers who, who say, you know, 2.2 terabytes is more than what I need for the card. Can I use that among multiple servers? And on the remote servers, uh, they just have an InfiniBand card and they're just connected to an InfiniBand network. And we have an initiator that installs there that allows a vSpace or a portion of that card to look local. So, you know, they get near, near local performance over InfiniBand and one card can be shared among multiple servers. So a ratio that we see most customers using who are using, v, who are using vSpace is one card to serve three to four servers is how they put that, as well as a local application. The, a lot of times what's happening on the, on, the, on the initiator is they have an application or they have a server that they, take, they bring up and take down a lot and the vSpace moves. And there's no, uh, they like the fact that uh, vShare allows them to move that volume very easily ar around their InfiniBand network. And that's, yeah, it's still all IB. It's still all IB. But that, that will be more interesting when we have Ethernet because then you can have, um, if you, as long as you accept the kind of the higher latency of just standard Ethernet, then you'll be able to share it with a lot more servers. So in this case, it's, a, it's an SSD effectively that you're, you're right. creating. It's not a cache. It's not a cache. And, and you're doing something akin to storage vMotion across InfiniBand to move the, the volume, vSpace volume around. We're not providing the vMotion capability, but we would support kind of that vMotion maneuvering mm -hmm. of a virtual machine going from host A to host B, and they want to mount that volume. Um, this is an example of customers who are doing kind of the vMotion example uh, where there's three cards, there's three vSpaces, all three hosts can see all three vSpaces. So the virtual machine in that example could move to any host and could mount that vSpace. Is that like a push, like would it, or it just always sees it, like would HA it, still it, al it always sees it. So, um, yeah, an HA failure between node one and node two, they would just automatically see the volume. And you're providing synchronous replication between the cards? On no, these? this is, these are three independent cards. Oh, so um, there's no clustering, there's no not not not, not this week. Okay, but <laughs> I mean, no, no, that is important. The data is only on that card. At, at this point no in time, There's no protection yes. whatsoever to another card to... Right, and... Your data has a single point of failure in that card. Um, and yeah, that's for, a yes or no question. For about another two weeks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
And then that was a leading answer. <laughs> yes, yeah, th thank you for asking that question. That was awesome because that leads me to kind of our next feature that's coming out, which is um, these cards actually be cached to a fabric. Mm. So you could so these this this these V spaces would align with LUNs that are in a fabric that we're then sharing over InfiniBand. And subsequent releases, we'll be able to do HA between cards and that kind of stuff. But that the uh, one point I wanted to want to make in this part is that you know we're going to be the only vendor with our software to be able to layer at a customer's whatever the customer's preferences the capabilities. So vShare over vCache when I when I get to cache is going to be unique because the customer is going to say, okay, I want a shared cache. Or I want a highly available cache. Or I want, um, I want a shared highly available cache. Or a shared highly available cache. Um, so that the ability to layer those at the customer, whatever the customer wants to do, is is key to this this architecture and this strategy. So next, I'll talk about vCache um, because. Vcache it is a, you know, we save all the data on what is in effect a primary volume that's, you know, it's got the capacitor around and everything else. We do offer right back cache in our caching solution. Um, I'll offer, there's write through, which all writes go through. There's write back, and then there's write around. Um, we also offer the capability to, to flush the cache, to synchronize with snapshots. So, you know, a programmatic interface that if someone is, you know, fronting a, a, a cache to something that takes snapshots, that we would, we would allow that to flow through so the snapshots would be consistent in between volumes. Do I have to script that or do you have a, a two-step VSS provider? Uh, you have to script it. We have a CLI. Okay, so I tell you guys to flush the cache and I wait for an acknowledgement because it's right. a big-ass cache and it could take hours to flush. Um, <coughs> I hope not. It depends on how many pending depends writes on, are there. Depends on the performance of the backend storage. Right, right. You know, if, it's if only I'm, five terabytes. Yeah. <laughs> how long does it take to, to write five terabytes to my Drobo Elite? A day and a half. Um, $40,000 card with a Drobo behind it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's get yeah, it. That's Howard, that, yeah, that's Howard, though. That's a Howard thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so it was at absurdum. Prioritize but, your spend. <laughs> but it, but that back end could still be all 7,200 RPM drives. And, and in right. fact, in a lot of situations, would likely be all 7,200 RPM drives. So it's not seconds to flush. It's... It could be minutes right. or hours. And, and we provide a response in the right. CLI. Right, you provide a response, and then I tell it to take a... Now, yeah, yeah. and so that command says, flush the cache and go into write-through mode until I tell you to no, come out. No, we, we, start, we start another write-back cache after that, after that point. So, but the, but the flow-through point and the acknowledgement, we guarantee to be consistent. Okay. With, with what with what the LUN on the back end sees. Yeah, uh, and the, the, the right back caching, is that somehow, are you maintaining redundant copies of that data across the network, or is it just on that one PCIe card? It's just on this one PCIe card. And what's the distinction between right back and right through in your environment? Uh, right, well, the right through is we don't acknowledge the right until it actually made it to the back end device. Here, the right. We're so still we, going through the SSD. We're still going... We're still going to whatever the flash. block device the OS sees that you say is is our back end device. And then the write around as actually doesn't go through the PCI SSD then? The well, write, it doesn't cache the data. It, it doesn't read. cache the data at all. So all in the write back in, situation, you're just the customer has to take the risk of data loss if you're not mirroring that data elsewhere? Well, the, the risk the customer is taking is that if there's a power failure Server, yeah. and we haven't gotten all the rights back out to the LUN, that they may have, the card may be consistent. We may, we may have the, uh, right, but the, the data card is trapped out. in that server. The data is trapped in if, that if server. The, if the, so the server comes back out and the application's happy, but now we have an asynchronous state between the card and the LUN. Yeah. And so an interesting feature of the cards themselves, and this is in the low level, kind of API piece is that the cards have a journal. So you could roll back the cards and say, you know, 
this is the last write that got to the LUN, what was pending, and the card could tell you that. But yeah, that's but if if it's already acknowledged if a VMware workflow. host fails, I'm with you. I can't do HA right because data is trapped in that card. This is, that's a manual administrator nightmare, nightmare inconvenience. You know, okay, load, somewhere in between. Somewhere in somewhere, data's there, but they have to know a lot about our API to make the, that happen. Where I was going with that question is, they just have to accept that risk. You don't provide a way to mitigate it with a mirrored acknowledgement with another node. Um, not in this, stackable. not in this release, but it is stackable. Okay. So the age, so we'll have a release where, you know, even in write back mode, we'd have a pair of cards that have this that have okay. this, a synchronous cache. Okay. So. Um, you know, if both servers went down and we hadn't synchronized with the LUN, you know, well, that's a times two problem, right? Yeah. So there's all, what's the rule in HA? You can, you can only solve for two problems, not three. So um, let's see, that's kind of where we're, where we're at. But the cache- some sort of limit how much data, uncommitted data you'll maintain or, or that sort of thing? I mean, you know. Well, the limit is the size of the card. So there is no limit. There is no limit. Now, we, we, if we're not talking to the back-end device, we declare ourselves to be in degraded mode. And we give the user the option of whether or not we want to continue to, to accept writes or, or not. When do you start writing down? When it's full? No, we start writing immediately. So we, do, we use a lazy write okay. methodology. So we don't, we try and get the writes to the but you line, don't, you to don't the throttle back write activity or, or that sort of stuff when you start getting fuller and stuff like that. No. Nope. Do you coalesce writes or do you write in order? Uh, we order the writes. So, um, and even in even when we're doing HA, we maintain order on the writes. Okay. So the so the back end storage is going to be crash consistent. Yes. To to some previous point in time. And our VHA solution all, does the same thing. So if you have two servers and you know. It is conceivable that, that some solutions would ship one, some rights before others, but we don't. Right. We maintain the general consistency between the two hosts as well. Yeah, well, I mean, you can, you can coalesce multiple rights to the same block and decrease the load on the back-end storage at the sacrifice of consistency. Right, and so there's things uh, in HA where, let's say the InfiniBag link goes down temporarily. Do you want to continue to accept rights and take down the application on the front end, or do you want to say you're in degraded mode? I don't yeah. want to fall back into write-through mode. Mm. No, I'm not in the caching. I'm talking about our oh, HA in, solution. Oh, HA, yeah. Right. So you want the application to stay up because the host is still good, even though the InfiniBang link is down. Right. Right. And the roadmap includes a combination of vCache and VHA? Yes. Um, but these, again, it's the vSpaces, and the, and the vSpaces have the independent properties will allow you to, that, that is really key to our, our strategy and our architecture because the, you can start a space as just a base SSD and then say, okay, now I want this to be a cache and link it to a LUN, or I want it to be a cache and HA. Um, and so you can, you, can add, you can add all these capabilities to each vSpace on the fly. So. Okay, but, but cache and HA isn't shipping today. Isn't shipping today. Um, the share and vcache are shipping in a couple weeks. So. Okay, and and the share and vcache includes caching from a server that does not have an SSD right. using another server's SSD. Right. Okay. Which makes the whole 4.8 terabytes make more sense because I could put five of them on a 10 user, 10 node cluster. Right, as well as even if, if you really want to, you could put two 4.8 terabytes in the server, right, now you have 10.6 or 9.6 terabytes that you could use as a cache in front of a LUN, and that's... So, so you're saying that, that in a future release you could have uh, a portion of the SSD, which is a vSpace LUN effectively, and a portion which is a cache, mm -hmm. and, and then both of those could be in HA mode where, where there's uh, replication, synchronous yep. replication of the data. And you could do it to the same backup server or different, you know, secondary servers, whatever, you know, whatever the operational model needs to be. That's what's coming. That's what's, well, yeah. The, the cards already support, you can do the SSD, cache, HA, and share today with the same card, right? You can run all the applications on one card on, 
on multiple namespaces okay. or multiple vSpaces in the card. Now the combinations of those is kind of what's coming.